it's it's interesting how many people abroad are concerned about what happens in America because of how impactful the American government is. And, and that's yeah. that's putting it nicely. Right. Impactful is a very nice way of saying uh, empire. Right. They, they really do have a vested interest in understanding the American polit political system and who's going to be the president of this empire because they have the ability to set foreign policy almost um, exclusively. The president of the United States has almost as much impact on the lives of people abroad as their own prime minister, as their own leader. Um, mm -hmm. and, and so this issue that's going on in Israel right now, a lot of us are looking directly to Joe Biden to do something about it because he has the ability to do something about it even if it's just simply withholding the funding that we continuously give Israel those are our tax dollars that are going to fund the atrocities that we're seeing every single day now um, and so yesterday uh, President Biden traveled to a factory in Dearborn Michigan now Dearborn is 47 percent Arab American when he arrived, Representative Rashida Tlaib met him on the tarmac and was photographed speaking with the president and first lady. Now, according to a Democratic aide, Tlaib reinforced much of what she said in her four speech uh, on the House floor, urging the president to protect Palestinian lives and human rights. Uh, Representative Debbie Dingell, another Democrat from Michigan who represent the district at the factory is located in, was on the tarmac as well and said the Tlaib exchange was part of an important dialogue and that, quote, it was very compassionate, honest discussion. But the president doesn't deal with these kinds of issues in public and he doesn't negotiate in public. OK. During his speech, President Biden spoke directly to Rashida Tlaib, uh, Representative Tlaib. Let's take a look at what he had to say. I'm Rashid Tlaib. Where's Rashid? I tell you what, Rashid, I want to say to you that uh, I admire your intellect. I admire your passion and I admire your concern for so many other people. And it's my from my heart. I pray that your grandma and family are well. I promise you I'm going to do everything to see that they are on the West Bank. You're a fighter, and God, thank you for being a fighter. <laughs> and Andy Levin, you know, a lot of Levins, and uh, Haley Stevens, uh, thank you balls. Well. Um, Mr. Mr. President, her name is Rashida Tlaib. Um, and I'm sure that when she spoke to you on the tarmac that she wasn't asking for acknowledgement. That's cool. But what's more important is that you, sir, have the ability to actually bring this to an end with one phone call. There are also three protests in Dearborn, Michigan, uh, coordinated in light of the president's uh, visit. I want to take a look at a short clip of some of those protests. There's one other there's, there's one other thing that I want to say about this this morning, James. I, I didn't see this until this morning, and, and we'll probably do a full reporting on this tomorrow. Um, but there was a YouTuber um, who lived in Gaza, and he had a YouTube channel alongside his daughters. And um, his name was Ahmed Al-Mansi. And his videos, if you go to his YouTube channel, um, you could see the joy that this man had with his children. And it was a beautiful channel. I mean, it was beautiful, not only in terms of the emotional connection that he had with his children, but just even the aesthetics of it. It was just bright and beautiful and colorful. Everything that you would think that you would see from a, a family vlog. Um, his last video was of him telling his daughters to not be afraid, telling them that everything was gonna be all right. And we found out this morning that he was killed. Not only he was killed, but his brother was killed. 
um, in airstrikes that are being conducted by the right wing government of Benjamin Netanyahu. And those bombs that are being dropped, those planes that are being flown, um, those are our those are our weapons, the United States of America. And I bring him up and I, I don't have a, a picture of him, uh, but I do have it on all my timelines. You can see it. Um, I bring it up because the way these things continue to happen, they happen because we don't see the humanity in the lives of the people who are being killed. We don't. We just see them as some abstract other. We see them as almost as just numbers. And at best, we see the government see them as collateral damage at best, if they even acknowledge. And if you go to this man's YouTube channel and um, I'll, I'll get the link and we'll put it in the YouTube channel. Uh, we'll put it in all the chats. But I, I just want you all to see that these are real people. These are fathers and mothers and children who are being killed because of the political ambitions of a far right wing fascistic leader by the name of Benjamin Netanyahu, who does not represent the totality of the Israeli government of the Israeli state or the Jewish people. These are his political ambitions. This is his way of wagging the dog to get the political power that he needs to protect himself from the criminal investigation that he's under in his own nation. And the price, the lives of real people who love their children as much as you love your children, who love their life as much as you love your life, who have dreams and hopes and aspirations, just like you have dreams, hopes and aspirations. Those people are being killed right now and they're being killed because of politics and the political ambition of one man and the far right wing government that supports him and the United States of America who uses our tax dollars to fund their atrocities. If we cannot see on an international stage that those people who may be thousands of miles away from us are as human as we are, if we can't see that, then we are far more than complicit with our tax dollars. We're complicit by dehumanizing human life and sitting back and watching it happen without the connection of realizing that they are our brothers. They are our sisters. They are our human family. And right now, our human family is suffering across the globe because of the political ambitions of men. And that has got to change.